In this lesson, I'd like to talk about how we can use photography itself to help us in post-production. In this example, you can see here, I was hired to photograph a number of these tiny little blue vials that hold these flower essences. And there was a number of these, and I knew that based upon just the shape of the object and uh, you know the fact that the logo itself has some white in it, that I really didn't want to get into using something like Oh, magic wand, because you can see it's you know an imprecise selection. Um, I'd have to add to that selection, and you know it could get kind of hairy in here, working with the right tolerance and figuring out best way. And the the nature of the magic wand selection itself was is really not super accurate. I don't tend to use it for product shots like this, but we can utilize taking a second capture that can help us create a mask in these sorts of production scenarios. I had about 50 of these little bottles to photograph, so I knew I needed a very quick solution to be able to you know, isolate down a mask. So in this scenario, I just kept my background lighting on, but then I turned my foreground, the product lighting, off and took a second capture. And you can see it gives me this shot, which in this scenario is very handy because when I go and look at my channels palette, it's very close to giving me a pretty nice mask right off the bat. So I could take a, the red channel, for example, and command all, select all, then command C, command V, paste it to itself, and then I can fade that effect in color burn, like so, and you can see that gives me a nice mask of this bottle right off the bat. I can turn the eyeball on here of my, my mask and get my pen tool out and generally come down in here and get a selection of this bottom edge, like so. Not worrying too much about the very bottom because I'm probably going to, in the final shot, pull some of the original shadow with it, but generally looking to kind of get a selection down here of this area. So, and I can come out here like that, boom, 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 and activate that and knock that to white, like so. I can use a paintbrush in overlay mode and get rid of these bits right here, like so. I can go ahead and inverse my mask to see where I'm missing that. And just like that, I have a channel mask that I can activate. Now what I want to do with this particular mask is take it and move it to my original product, like so. I'm done with this guy for now. And I can command click it and you can see now I've got this tight selection around my product. I can finesse it a bit, areas where I may have missed with my, my, my pen and just uh, take a kind of a loose selection down in there. That's fine. That looks fine down in there. And up here, I'm going to modify the selection. Let's say half a pixel. And from here, I can cut the product out to its own layer, adding a new blank layer. Let's see here, putting that layer below the product and pushing it to white like so. I've got a nice clean product shot. I can take the product itself, double it up, edit, transform, flip it on the vertical axis, and move this one below down here. And I can take it and drop its opacity to something like 15% or so. And there we have it. A product shot looks like the item is sitting on a white reflective tabletop. I can put a nice crop on it like so. And there you have it product sitting on what looks to be sort of a plexiglass surface, that kind of thing. If I wanted to take some of its original shadow, you can see that there's some original shadowing there. I could do that. I could come down here and, oops, and get my paintbrush back out, go into normal mode on the paintbrush, and paint with black and get some of the original base shadow painted back in on the product, like so. 
and then areas where it's a little weird, I can paint that back out. Like so, just so that it provides a little bit of a, a grounding of the object on the surface itself. And there you have it. There is a way that you can take a second photographic file, in this case a photograph with a foreground lighting has been turned off, and quickly isolate a channel out of it, moving that channel over to your original image, giving you a really quick selection of something that allows you to clean up a product shot right off the bat.